Hello everybody, so today we got a special guest here with us, we got Sedan Carr and today he's going to help us answer one of the most asked questions that I have been asked on my YouTube channel which is how can I get a mining engineering job in Canada as a foreigner and so many of you guys uh, that have asked this question are from either India or from Africa um, so today I got Sedan Carr to sort of help us deconstruct wh what that process is like seeing how he's went through the process himself so we'll just jump right into it. Um, Sid, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, um, sort of your background, where you mm -hmm. came from, where do you study in India? And yeah, just get the audience uh, a little bit of info about yourself. Sure. Uh, thanks, Juan, for having me on this conversation. Um, and I know this is a burning question for a lot of people, so I, I'd love to help out with uh, whatever I can. I can. Uh, so talking about me, I'm like, I'm from India and then I'm from New Delhi. So I did my bachelor's back home uh, from the south of India. It's 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 a college called College of Engineering, Gendi, um, Anna University. So I did my four years of bachelor's there. And then post that, I worked for a couple of years in India with a multinational company. Uh, it's called Vedanta Resources. And that was in the northwestern part of India. What sort of company like, was that? Was it like an engineering, mining? Yeah. Okay. It was a mining company, and then I was working as a shift engineer, like regular shifts that uh, we kind of are used to. <laughs> so I was working there for like a couple of years. It was a lead zinc uh, silver underground mine. It was a pretty good experience, and then uh, as time passed, I kind of wanted to gain more skills, which is why I decided to pursue my master's. That's when I applied for the UBC MNG uh, program, and I luckily got selected into it. I kind of did the course over a span of another 18 months, if I'm not wrong, which includes a co-op work term. And here I am after right that. On. Yeah. Okay, so uh, lots of good information there. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper in each of those parts. Uh, so just to summarize, how long of roughly uh, of uh, work experience did you have before coming into Canada, like year-wise? Uh, yeah, I think it was about, uh, to be precise, it was two years, two months. So I kind of started around, uh, I graduated and then started somewhere um, in uh, June of 2015, 20, June of 2013. And then I uh, left that job in 2017, July, approximately okay. end of July. And uh -huh. uh, August uh, 2015 is when I started with the master's program. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so can you tell me about what your journey of immigration to Canada was like? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, first of all, like while I was working, I was I was relentlessly applying to these different uh, universities. It was UBC, um, East of Canada, then it will be Montreal, um, McGill University. And then there were a couple of universities I was looking in Germany and then uh, Australia as well. Like and I was kind of comparing all these different options. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, when I kind of balance it out, like which is kind of feasible for me back then, but what uh, I had financially and then uh, my my whole interest of being in the mining industry so i kind of locked in on canada and uh, which is why ubc just happened to be yeah uh, right on. so like yeah i just applied uh, luckily i didn't have to write any gre examinations or anything it was uh, a fairly straightforward process i applied as a student visa okay uh, yeah and how long does that last for the student visa the student visa kind of lasted for the program duration so uh I think when I, when I when I came to the border, like the port of entry uh, at the Canadian airport, so I kind of got awarded for like a two years student visa term. Okay. So, but anyways, like in the middle of the program, there was there was changes, right? So I I went for the co-op work term. So and does that that's extend when my visa? Your, does that extend that actually visa? goes for a new visa? Oh. It okay. actually goes goes in as a new visa. So I apply for a co-op work visa. So. That lasted for the duration of my co-op work term. In case there was any extension, I have to again reapply for that uh, for the extension as well. Okay, so, so like post the completion of the uh, the co-op work term, I had to again reapply for the student visa. Gotcha. So like once you got that co-op offer in hand, you you say mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm gonna work for this many uh, many many uh, months, and then that's when they extend it, right? Exactly. Okay. Right on. Yeah. Um. 
so yeah, so you said um, f when you applied to the uh, UBC MEng program, you didn't ha uh, have to do any GREs. But what was the uh, application process like? Like, what documents did you have, did you have to provide? Uh, first of all, like I just happened to fill out the form, the general application form that's on the UBC website, and uh, post that uh, the program director reached out to me that uh, okay, like we we you have a strong uh, resume, and mm -hmm. then. Um, kind of qualify for the for the program but however we kind of require a letter of recommendation from a uh, few people right. so at least i'd say I'd, I'd advise anyone who's interested for the program to at least have three references and uh, independently apply your ref letter of references to the university that's one and then uh, if i'm not wrong yeah the only other thing was like uh, your transcripts from back 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 at the university like back home uh, uh i think we have a different uh credit system sure, how yeah. we yeah i think it's out of 10 you get a cgpa or a gpa mm -hmm. while while with the canadian system it's a little different so you could use independent uh, um bodies like wes which kind of convert your uh, international experience into a local canadian uh, um qualified i mean they recognize it as a local canadian experience so okay that really helps yeah okay uh, next question uh what was your experience like in the ubc mnj program it was a it was a good really enriching experience because i was pretty much sure what i wanted to do in the program like i was targeting uh i was i was always interested in mine economics and prop mechanics mm -hmm. so these were my couple of interesting uh subjects that that i pursued and then i'd also the option of choosing uh, and structuring my program as i wanted to be like you could cherry pick your most favorite courses and and kind of structure your whole program like i think i, I think that's probably the usp of that program which is why it was a very fulfilling experience all right yeah that sounds good was there any like particular courses or experiences that stood out to you oh definitely i i was fortunate enough to have a course uh, on block caving and uh, the professor, he was an adjunct professor, but he happened to be an ex uh, GM with Rio Dinto. I don't know if you know of this guy, um, Alan Moss. Yeah, he yeah. happened to be with, uh, the, uh, with, with the Rio Dinto group and he has his own uh, uh, private company. So he was also my uh, mentor for the final project submission that I did mm -hmm. for the program. So yeah, that was a really good course. Excellent, good to hear. Yeah. All right. So. Um, basically, for the audience, uh, how I met Sid was through working at Shell Canada. So we'll jump into that portion now. So sure. what was the application process like for applying to Shell to work there? Oh, yeah. So for the Shell, uh, I think not just Shell, like any anywhere in Canada, this usual process is kind of to network with uh, the recruiters and the HR, look for your job applications on the company website. Um, and yeah, just relentlessly pursue uh, structure your resume and your cover letters catering to the job profile like read it through thoroughly mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly what they want uh, and yeah if, if you if you really are a suitable candidate like your skills match then you definitely get a hear back from them and for, for Sun uh, for for shell that's exactly what I did I, I kind of look up the job postings uh, you could definitely see it on the website mm -hmm. um, yeah just had to structure my cover letter and resume catering to that job description and it was pretty straightforward from there. Do you recall anything about the interview process? Because personally, I remember when I went through it, I thought it was like a very rigorous process. I know, yeah. What, yeah. what were your thoughts on that? I think, I think yeah, it was a pretty rigorous process. Like they, ha they had they uh, had analytical exams and all that stuff too, right? Yeah. So yeah, it was a pretty rigorous process. And then, um, and, and uh, what do you call it? Um, the interview? Yeah, the interview was actually with uh, with a recruiter for me. In my case, that was the first round of interview. Um, if I recall the guy, I think it was um, Stuart Young, if I'm not mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he happened to interview me and then uh, he liked me in the interview. That's when he's like, okay, I'm going to schedule you a one-on-one -on -one interview with the technical lead of the uh, geotech team. They are probably looking for a suitable candidate like you and could definitely value that team. So in the geotech team, I think I had an interview with uh, Derek. Um, so 
yeah, that was a little bit of technical skills, like, but, but they were trying to understand, like, why do I need this role? Why do I want to apply for this role? Mm-hmm. Uh, what are the skill sets that I have and what skill sets do I need to, like, what am I looking at gaining out of this co-op term? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to have that thought uh, process started even before you even apply. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's kind yeah. of be prepped as early as you can. Um, so now your yeah. work term at Shell, was that for, it was 16 months, right? That you did? Uh, no, it was it was eight months. I wish months. it was sixteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Eight months. So, uh, through that eight months, uh, can you tell us about what you did, what your job title was, and just your experience yeah. overall? For sure. Yeah, I was based out of uh, Shell Calgary office, and I was working with the geotechnical design team. Uh, wherein, I, yeah, I was pretty much assisting senior engineers who are licensed PNG engineers. So I was assisting them with uh, drafting reports, uh, supporting them with AutoCAD drawings kind of prepared a framework for an as built report, which is a regulatory document that kind of needs to be submitted to the regulatory body. So I assisted with that, did uh, a lot of slope stability analysis works for them, um, like particular case studies, um, worked a lot with you, I, I remember. Yes. Yeah. You, you assisted me a lot, like there were a lot of mining plans that I had to come to you, mm-hmm. uh, like what, what's, what's changing in this location, what's the future plan of work, uh, so things like that. So. It was, yeah. a good, it was a good, very valuable experience. Yeah, it sounds like a very enriching experience. <laughs> I know, I know. It, it, it was, definitely. Um, so I think that just about wraps up our interview. Was there any last parting uh, gifts of advice that you have for aspiring students who want to be like you? Oh, um, I, I think definitely, like, pursue your dreams, but yeah, be realistic. Uh, keep, like, uh, like I think I think for a lot of people, they, they kind of have a structured uh, job hiring process back home. I think they kind of pass out of the university and then there's a university uh, like a, what do you call it uh, tie ups with the industry so where, where you can go for career fairs stuff like that and they kind of expect that universities would just come in uh, like all these different companies would just come into the university and just hire you but that, that's pretty much not the case here so in terms of being realistic yeah definitely work on your resume work on your cover letter network as much as possible uh, yeah, definitely. It's a, it's about knowing your things, but it's also about knowing the right people in the industry. Mm-hmm. Well, Sid, thank you so much for joining us for this interview. I know so many people are going to find this interview so very helpful. Um, and yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty sure like you're going to get lots of people just going to be following up and asking you questions. I'll be more than happy to help them, yes. Excellent. Good to hear. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. wrap up here then. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in t- to this interview. We'll have more, I guess, any Q&A, any questions that you have or any future videos you want me to do, just leave them in the comments section below, and hopefully I'll get to catch up to it next time. So that's it.